Good morning, ain't it? It's Thursday, July 23rd. Are you ready for some football? I realize it's July, but it's Oklahoma. We're always thinking football, and we're trying to hurry up August, and then we're trying to hurry up September as well. I'm Steve Keim. Thanks for joining us on this muggy 94% humidity Thursday morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Enid. I'm Sarah Delangel. It's good to have you back. After last week, you decided to return? Yes, Did yes. You? I had a lot of fun last week, so well, here good, I am this good. week. Well, we're glad that you're back. Right now, folks, we're holding steady at 77 degrees. The winds are just a slight breeze out of the northeast at 5. And uh, I tell you what, high today is going to be 98. And so the humidity at 94%, it's going to feel like 150 today. It's going to be pretty miserable. We are glad you're with us. We've got a great show this morning. And what's on the show? Well, we have a very special guest. He's actually part of the Enid Public Schools. He's a very new guest. And if you like football, you'll like today's show. So it's time to rise and shine, Enid. Good morning, Enid. Thursday, July 23rd. The summer is moving right along, and thank you for being with us today. We have a great show, as Sarah mentioned. Uh, it's going to be kind of miserable today weather-wise. Uh, as you can tell, the, a lot of lightning going on this morning. I think we have a radar picture coming up, and you'll see that there's uh, some rain, Sarah, to the north of us and way to the east of us. So you see all that lightning that I thought it was going to be raining this morning. And then when I walked outside and I felt that 94% humidity, so anyway, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, where all the rain is off to the northeast and today. But uh, it's supposed to be a warm one, 98 degrees. We are so glad that you're with us. And um, I wonder if we should do the three-day forecast. Well, it's going to be hot, hot, hot. I know. That's, that's what I'm concerned. I don't know if we want to share that kind of news. It's, <laughs> it's going to be 140 for the next three days. There it is. Okay, Sarah. So give us, give us some good news in that, Sarah. Can well, you? I don't know if these are good news or not, but we're looking at over 100 um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I it's, it's so. hot. 102 Friday, 101 Saturday, and we're looking at a 102 on Sunday. And Penn, our producer of the show, reminded me, how uh, the days are getting shorter. Even though it's getting miserable with the 100 degree temperatures, mm -hmm. you know, the sun sets at 829, 828, 827, so the days are getting shorter. So it'll be football season soon. Yay. You a football fan? No, um, uh, baseball. No, uh, baseball. I've heard of baseball, so, <laughs> okay. It's 733, good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us. There's a couple of announcements we wanna share with you. Uh, Fourth and Willow, something's going on there. We got a yes. lane closure. Sarah? Starting today, Fourth and Willow will be closing. ONG is getting ready to install a new gas main. It will be, it will be closing for with for the next three weeks. Three weeks. Whoa. Yes. That's the that's uh, price of progress, I guess. But we have to change these things. I mean, it's infrastructure. We got to keep everything updated and and all of that. Another uh, another event that we want to tell you about, uh, Enid, is the uh, Walk of Fame. They made the announcement yesterday that the city of Enid is taking nominations for recipients for the Walk of Fame award. And you can contact the city clerk's office and talk to a young lady named Linda Parks. Her number is six one six seventy two twenty one and talk to Linda at her office, and she can get you the nomination form and things of this nature. And the, the, um, the winner of the Walk of Fame will be announced, I think, during the Cherokee Strip celebration time, because the nominees are in the parade and everything, so I can't believe we're already talking September. Wow. And September means football, by the way, <laughs> even, though, even though you're For not. For those that like football. Yeah, for those of you <laughs> that like football, so. Well, we need to go and find out what happened overnight 
and in the news. And we've got uh, Derek Sadas has joined us. He's always been working kind of behind the scenes and doing some tech talk for us, but he's moved in the, the news role and he has the Oklahoma Minute. So we'll find out what's happening in uh, the state of Oklahoma with news right now. Good morning, Enid. This is your Oklahoma Minute. In Capitol News, Governor Mary Fallon has issued an executive order giving the Oklahoma Attorney General's Office expanded authority over proposed actions of numerous state regulatory boards. Board members who reject the Attorney General's advice will be subject to removal for misconduct. Oklahomans affected by last month's floods in southern Oklahoma and elsewhere are now eligible to apply for the federal disaster assistance with FEMA. Last night in Broken Arrow, five people were found dead and two teenagers aged 16 and 18 were taken into custody. It is being called a homicide investigation. No other details are available. An anonymous poll of more than 20 Big 12 players, 88% said they want to see the league expand beyond 10 teams in the future. On another note, our special friend Sierra Petcha from the Miss Rodeo Oklahoma was, who was also a special guest and co-host twice on the GM show, gave us a shout out on News OK. Thank you for the shout out, Sierra. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to Steve and Laura. Yes, the Miss Rodeo Oklahoma pageant is going on this weekend, Oklahoma City. And Sierra, who's helped us out a couple times, as Derek mentioned, uh, was being interviewed by the Oklahoman on their, their website. And um, of all the things, when they were asking her about one of the great experiences, she said, well, you know, I got to co-host on Good Morning Enid. So like Derek said, I, I want to say thank you too to Sierra. She, she did a great job, but we just appreciate other people across the state referring back to Enid. Yes, definitely. That's pretty neat. Good morning, Enid. It's 737. In case you're uh, wondering how long it takes to, what are we, 23 minutes away till 8 o'clock if you got to be somewhere. Still holding steady at 77 degrees. And high today is going to be 98, and it's miserable out there because, Sarah, humidity, it's holding awesome. steady, 94%. So not going to be very fun. Well, uh, if you have a, a vacation picture, we'd like to send the, that card to, uh, there we go. We've got a picture right there. Where, where are we at? Are we top, top of uh, what? We're top of the mountain. Which mountain in Oklahoma is that? <laughs> Kilimanjaro or something? Close. Anyway, if you have a vacation picture you want to send it, you can email to asksteve at ena.org. There's our Holsteins. They're checking the mailbox. They want to hear from you. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you go on a vacation trip, send us your picture, and we'll put it on there. Sarah, if you take a trip to, I don't know, Muskogee or some place like that, <laughs> send us a picture. We'll put that on there. Also, if you have a suggestion for a guest, uh, somebody's coming to town, movie star, non-movie star, we'd like for them to be on Good Morning Enid. Send us a note at asksteve at enid.org and we will uh, put that on the air. And also recipe, cookout, and stuff like that. So, okay. So, 7.38 on this humid Thursday, July 23rd. It's going to be August before we know it, Sarah. Yep, it's going to be December before we know it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And now it's time for What's Going On with Raquel. Good morning, Enid. This weekend we have some great events going on. We have an event that's already been ongoing. It's the Connie Mack South Plains Regional Baseball Tournament, and this is at the David Allen Memorial uh, Ballpark. It's also being held at the NOC Baseball Field, and this is just a tournament um, from different teams around different states to make it to the Sandy Koufax World Series. On Saturday morning, we also have Crazy Day, Crazy Day is a well-known tradition in Enid, as we all know. This will begin at 10 a.m. in downtown Enid. And also, Saturday, we have the Bushido Arm Wrestling Tournament at the Chisholm Troll Pavilion. And this begins at noon and goes on until 8 p.m. And this is such a great event, um, kind of different for what we've been having in Enid so far, but it's professional arm wrestlers from six different states. There will also be a car show and a motorcycle rally. So it sounds like a very interesting event. Hopefully your family will be able to attend to one of these um, great events in Enid. So that's what's going on in Enid this weekend. Very good, Raquel, thank you very much. Now, Sarah, she will not mention this, but you know that Raquel, 
she's entered in that arm wrestling. <laughs> she I is. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mess with her, that's for sure. But she, she's not going to tell you on TV, but I'm sure she's uh, uh, what entered in that event. I need to make a correction on the phone number about Linda Parks. It's 616-7271. I may have said 21 or something. So it's 616-7271. And that's in regard to the Walk of Fame. So if you want information on that, <clears throat> excuse me, 616-7271. Well, we have a department head video we want to share with you right now. It's with Stephanie Carr, and she will share with you what uh, her role is at the City of Enid, City of Enid, excuse me, and we'll see that right now. Hello, my name is Stephanie Carr. I serve as Director of Community Development Block Grant. The City of Enid Community Development Block Grant Program strives to address obstacles to meeting underserved needs, foster decent housing in our community, public housing improvements, and resident initiatives. If I can be of assistance to you, please contact me at the number provided on our website. Thank you. And now for our special guest with Jamara. Good morning, Enid. Our special guest is coach Steve Hayes. He's the new head football coach at the Enid High School. Coach, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, it's great to be here, good morning. We appreciate your time. I know the kids have been practicing this summer, um, and we appreciate that you took the time to be just with us. It's my pleasure. I understand that you began serving your position in January, but um, we wanted to let the folks at home know uh, who's the new coach now that the season is approaching. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I got here on January 19th, and we've been working hard uh, getting the staff in place and getting the kids ready for hopefully it'll be a very exciting fall football season. It's, it's been a good six months. Great, yeah. great. Um, now, what are the goals you have for this year or um, in your career as a head coach in Enid High? You know, the basic mission that I have as a, as a head football coach and the reason that I chose to do this is because I feel like it's, it's a great vehicle to teach young men how to be good men. Uh, you know, I, I think you really don't know if you're successful or not as a football coach until 10 years after they're gone and you see what kind of lives they've chosen to lead. Uh, what kind of choices they're making and the impact that they're having on their homes and their families and the community uh, that they live in. Uh, it's uh, it's a, just a, a great opportunity to teach a lot of great character lessons, a lot of great life lessons as well as compete and have a lot of fun uh, learning what it means to be part of a team and winning some games. And, and we want to bring some winning back to Enid, uh, but we want to do it in the right way and uh, help our young men grow up and do right things. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, now, what is the best experience or um, an experience that changed your, your life or made an impact in your life, if you will, as, as a coach? Not um, necessarily in your six months in Enid, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, previously. you know, as a player uh, growing up, I had some, some men that coached me that uh, showed me uh, kind of the same things that I'm wanting to show kids. I had some really good coaches that poured into me and, and taught me the value of those type of relationships and, and I think that kind of hooked me uh, into becoming a coach plus I love the game of football and and I loved it as a player and wanted to continue to be around it you know as a coach I, I, I've coached anywhere from the largest high school in the state of Texas as an assistant to a small private school and and uh, have been in some big wins and some big losses and there's great value and a lot of lessons to be learned in both uh, I've just been very fortunate to have a have had a really uh, rewarding career to this point and I plan on continuing it here in Enid Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. We hope you do. Yes, <laughs> now, um, you mentioned character building, mm -hmm. um, and I was reading your biography mm -hmm. and uh, found out uh, something called Building Champions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me more about that uh, character and leadership program? Mm -hmm. Do you plan on implementing that here in Eni? Um, when I was at uh, Trinity down in Dallas, uh, we brought in a man by the name of Adam Leidig who works on a program called I Am Second. And uh, we wanted to build a specific uh, character program for our kids there. And what we created in, in uh, collaboration with him was this Building Champions program. And Champions is an acronym for some character values that we felt like uh, kids ought to learn, grow in, and begin to demonstrate on their own and, and teach and give back to the younger kids as well. Uh, the acronym stands for courage, honor, uh, attitude, mental toughness, um, purity. Uh, integrity, ownership, and navigation. Uh, we will do our own version of it here and eat it as it relates to this community and to the school that we're in. Uh, our, our kids 
in their spring uh, meeting that we have at the end of spring football uh, chose their five core values as a team. Uh, it's an acronym you'll see on the front uh, label of their helmet, uh, MDAL, I-M-D-A-L, and it stands for Integrity, Mental Toughness, Discipline, Accountability, and Loving One Another. Uh, and so uh, we're already trying to instill and impart that to the kids now. But I think the kids have to be part of the creative process so that they can own it. Uh, it needs to be perceived as theirs. I agree. I think it's not just uh, playing on a team, but being team players. Sure. It's two Absolutely. different things. And uh, if you can um, help them understand that they can do great together mm -hmm. instead of just trying to do yeah. it on their own, yeah. I think it's, it's going to be an amazing opportunity for them. Absolutely. You're exactly right. Now, uh, tell me briefly, what are we seeing on the table? Uh, <laughs> um, this is our new um, helmet decal design. It's the same helmet that we've used in the past as far as the, the silver helmet, the blue face mask, but we've uh, chosen to update uh, the decal and, and really want it to mean something, want uh, the community to take some pride in, in our kids and their uniform and our kids to understand that they represent the community and are responsible of acting in a way that would promote that. Uh, they don't actually get the decal on their helmet uh, until they earn it, um, and they have to earn it through, uh, uh, you know, uh, perfect habits, uh, good leadership. Our definition of leadership in our program is making the people around you better. Uh, you know, if they're there, they need to be making the people around them better. If they're not, they're not leading well. Um, and so uh, they have to accumulate a certain number of points in order to earn that decal. Uh, during the course of the season, if they make poor, poor choices, they can lose the decal as well. Uh, they, they need to understand it's a privilege to put that helmet on. Uh, and, and, and that particular decal is a headdress, which represents to me uh, outstanding leadership, uh, serving one another and making the people around you better. And so uh, they'll have a constant reminder of that when they put their helmet on to compete and practice every day. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Coach Hayes, uh, for sharing with us your plans for this for mm -hmm. this season and, and for the year. We are, are happy to have you. I know uh, Enid will benefit greatly from the, from the great ideas that you're bringing. Um, thanks again. Mm -hmm. And now back to you, Steven Sara. Are you ready for some football? Yes. I, I really enjoyed that because I, you know, when I played football a hundred years ago, um, I had two concussions, broke my toe, broke my shoulder, and I don't remember anything else that happened, but I had a great time playing football. But anyway, when I hear about the character quality and the team, I wouldn't change that experience for nothing. It was, uh, I know it doesn't make any sense to you or maybe to <laughs> some other folks, but there's just something about the team concept, two a days in August, it's just uh, character building. I call it character building, but it's probably another word, but anyway, we're getting my, close my to My brother is a big fan of football. He played football during his high school years, and I don't like football, but I can really appreciate the dedication and the discipline that he put into that sport. Yeah. He was passionate, and I, and I think that's what's neat about the players and yeah, the sport overall. And you, you know, like I said, 100 years ago, and I still remember when those great experiences. So good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us, and we appreciate Coach Hayes being with us today. at 748, still holding steady at 77 degrees, slight wind out of the northeast at 5. What's the humidity? Sarah? 90. Yeah, about 94 percent. In other words, pretty miserable, but the high today is going to be 98. Well, speaking of uh, news and information, let's go back to the Oklahoma Minute. And uh, we've got Derek back with us to, to kind of give us a recap of the news that happened in the state overnight. Derek? Good morning, Enid. Here's your Oklahoma Minute. In Capitol News, Governor Fallon has issued an executive order giving the Oklahoma Attorney General's Office expanded authority over proposed action of numerous state regulatory boards. Board members who reject the Attorney General's advice will be subject to removal for misconduct. Oklahoma's affected by last month's floods are now eligible to apply for federal disaster assistance with FEMA. Last night in Broken Arrow, five people were found dead and two teenagers ages 16 and 18 were taken into custody. No other details are immediately available. An anonymous poll of more than 20 Big 12 players, 88% said they want to see the league expand beyond 10 teams in the future. On another note, Ms. Rodeo Oklahoma, who was also twice a special guest on the Good Morning Enid show, gave us a shout out on News OK. Thanks, uh, Sierra. Now back to Steve and Sarah. Derek, thank you very much. And uh, we've got to move along this morning because we've, uh, we've got Lieutenant Governor 
He's going to be on at 8 o'clock this morning. So if you want to see that interview, if you haven't seen that interview, it will come up at 8 o'clock. So keep that in mind. It is 749 on this Thursday, July 23rd. And now for some, for the next three-day forecast. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's do that miserable. I'm sorry. I was just trying to get past <laughs> this miserable forecast. I'm sorry, Sarah. Thank you for keeping us on track. So how miserable is it going to be? Well, it's going to be pretty <laughs> miserable. We're looking at over 100 throughout the next three days. 102 on Friday, 101 on Saturday, and a high of 102 on Sunday. Okay. Well, to find out uh, what's going on this weekend, we've got Raquel back with us. And what can we do, Raquel, in this 102-degree weather? Well, there's plenty to do. Um, and it's just a quick reminder that we have the Connie Mack South Plains Regional Baseball Tournament going on. Uh, it's an ongoing event. Also, Saturday morning, we'll have the crazy day sales beginning in downtown. And Saturday as well at noon at the Chisholm Trail Pavilion, we have the Bushido Arm Wrestling Tournament. So this is what's going on in Enid this weekend. Hopefully you'll be able to be out there. That's what's going on. Ra Raquel, thank you very much. Short and sweet and to the point. Just another great weekend of great activity. So thank you very much. Uh, to navigate the police department website, we've got Derek Silas this morning for the next couple of minutes to talk about that and Tech Talk. Here we go. Hi, I'm Derek Silos. Today I'll show you how to navigate through the Enid Police website. First, go to enid.org and navigate to Departments Police. You will notice in the right center of the home page the News box and Events box. And in the direct center, you will see the Police Chief's video and links to Lost and Found Pets, Most Wanted, Crime Prevention, Adopt a Pet, Stalked Victims Handbook, Staff Directory, Citizens Police Academy. You'll also see Quick Crime Stoppers links and a quick notification sign up tool. To the left of the center of the page, you will see the navigation links for the police, including using 911, which includes great info on when to use the 911 system. Administration, which lists profiles of the executive branch of the police department. Here you can read information on each captain. Adopt a pet. This contains contact information and links for animals that need adopting. Also are links to city ordinances regarding pets. Animal control. This navigation redirects to the animal control subdivision and contains all types of information on how to report, search, or find information on lost or found pets. Then there's a link to crime prevention. These links are preventive measures citizens can use to stop or deter crime before it begins. Check out crime reports to view a map of crimes in the city. The next left navigation is the link to divisions. This gives a breakdown of the five police department divisions and an overview of its processes. Directly under that, there are various forms. And then there's employment where you can find all the information on how to apply for a police office position. Be sure to view the recruitment video. If you have a question, you can probably already find the answers under the FAQs tab. And if you want to know a little about the police department's history, there's a tab for that also. And because we are very fond of those furry little friends, we've listed the lost and found pets linked directly into the navigation. The next two navigation links are press releases and public service announcement. Under this, there is registered sex and violent offenders. You can view information on this and view details on where the offenders reside. And finally in the navigation are the specialized units, wanted and staff directory. Join me next time to hear more tech tips. I'm Derek Silas. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate all that information. We appreciate all the work that the Indian Police Department does for, it, for us. And it's 7.55 on 
this Thursday morning, July 23rd. I, I just keep thinking, man, the summer's moving along. Is it going quick for you? It's going extremely quick. I think the year is going extremely quick for me. And earlier this morning, you said, I said, you know, September's going to be here. Then you said, well, <laughs> December's going to be here. And then I see on TV the other day, we're doing Christmas and July stuff. It's just like, well, let's, let's hurry up the year a little more. So I don't know. It's holding steady, 77 degrees this morning. Humidity is really off the scale at 94%. However, later on today, Sarah, the sun's going to come out and it's going to be a hot 98 degrees. So, well, we have another special guest. What's her name? Well, our special guest is Polly. She is a beautiful shepherd mix. She loves to snuggle Look and loves treats. She's got her own blanket. She's precious. She's very good with kids. She's four months, so she's a little baby. Um, <laughs> Look at those ears. <laughs> she's in really need of a home, a loving home. Um, the cost to take her home would be $90. That will cover for the rabies shot. So if you're in need of a, of a little pet, someone to bring love to your kids, Polly would definitely be the perfect little puppy. And, and what kind of mix is she? I mean, what, she's a the shepherd breed? mix. A shepherd mix. Yes. I wonder if the blanket comes with her. We'll have to ask <laughs> Hannah. Hannah, this blanket, you throw that in. And we, we want to just say thank you because uh, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, we had a puppy named Nora. Nora yes. was adopted, and we thank you for responding. Polly needs a home. Look at Polly right there. She's looking and said, Oh, somebody mentioned my name. <laughs> But we appreciate Hannah and the work that she does at Animal Control and also the, the other staff that are out there. And for Hannah to get up early and bring in Polly, look at Polly. How cute. But anyway, you see the number right there, 249-4910. Looks like Polly's hiding behind that phone number. There we go. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate Hannah bringing Polly in. I think she's a little sleepy. Well, I would be, too, if I had my blanket. I, I think I'd be <laughs> at this time? <laughs> at this time in the morning as well. All right, Hannah, thanks for stopping by, and thanks for bringing Polly. We appreciate that. 249-4910 if you want to find a home for Polly. We have about a minute to go, and Sarah, I'd like to remind everybody, we were talking earlier about the Walk of Fame. Yes. And uh, I mentioned inadvertently the wrong phone number, and it is 616-7271. So if you want to call and get a nomination form and uh, nominate someone for the Walk of Fame honor, please call 616-7271. That's the right phone number. I, uh, I didn't do it on purpose, but I read the wrong phone number. So we have about a minute to go. Is there anything going on in solid waste uh, here in July that's pretty exciting? Well, actually, this week in solid waste, we'll be displaying a truck, um, the boom truck. Yeah, we'll be displaying it at the farmer's market this weekend, okay. um, passing oh, out right. water. That's uh, right. So we'll be there if you want to stop by. Okay. Check us out. We have a, we have a few seconds le left. Let's look at the radar if we could as we prepare for today. Again, high today is going to be around 98, and uh, there is a 30% chance of storms. But as you can see on the radar, most of that is north of us and also to the east of us. But again, the fact that there's 30% chance of storms today, some of that stuff to the north could kind of dip down to where Enid is, see how close that is. And uh, if you're feeling the humidity at 94%, you can understand why with those big thunderstorms. So we appreciate all the work behind the scenes to get the radar up for us this morning. Well, we got to go, Sarah. Thanks for being here. Did you have fun? Yes, I had a lot of fun. A lot of information in 30 minutes. Thank you for being with us, and um, have a great day, and we'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday.